But I know that I've been forgiven And I'm loved With the greatest love With the greatest love. love Oh, I've been set free I've been Okay, uh, Heavenly Father, we know that you are present here, and you know you are in each and every one. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you speak through me today, and hopefully they not see me, but they see you. And hopefully they not hear me, but they hear the true teacher. So I'm asking you, Father, in the name of your beloved Son, that you share with them what you share with me. And it's all you and none of me. And Father, and remember I Jesus said, I on my own can do nothing. The Father who dwells in me does all the work. So this is the work of God through Suhad. Okay. Um, this is when I was praying. Um, everything is just God took me back to the Garden of Eden. So I'm going to tell you like a little story. It's not like a preaching things. But I want to take you like a little story that God took me back to the Garden of Eden. Eden and he asked me, how was life there? And I start thinking, you know, the earth was dark and void and without any light and or any form, correct? And then the Spirit of God flew and what happened? And he started changing things. He put lights, he put the green, he put um, the life from the animals to the sea to the fish and he filled it up, correct? And then what did he do after that? He created Adam. Wow. You know, and every time he created something, what did God say? It was good. You know, why? Because God is good. And then he created Adam, and he said, it's good. Actually, he said, it's very good. Women don't take it, uh, especially Donna. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> is, is, is the camera on and the mic on? Okay, good. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyway, so God created, you know, Eve, and, and everything was great, you know, in first Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. Then, then what happened? You know, that tree, it was there. Like if you see, you know, how the tree, and here in, um, in chapter 2, and watch, watch this, what he said, chapter 2 and 9. And out of the ground the Lord God caused to grow every tree that is pleasing to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, do you notice here, this is the first one, knowledge. And that's what human is, is all about what? Knowledge. But knowledge of what? Good and evil. So what happened here? I love it in chapter three. You know, it's so funny in chapter three. If you, I was reading it two, three times. You know, and uh, you know when they ate from that tree, and you know suddenly they start feeling naked, and they start having fear and running. And then when God called Adam, and I love Adam, and he said, "She made me do it." And, you know, when God talked to Eve, the serpent make me do it. You know, we always blame and complain, and that's what is life all about, right? It's to blame and complain. Nobody want to take responsibility. So, what happened here, this is what I want to really shed the light today of something really happened. And I, and I wrote it down here because I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> All right, on the second chapter of Genesis, we ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We accepted into the mind the conditioning of good and evil. What did we accept it into the mind? The conditioning of what? Good and evil. See, we, when the moment you took fruit of this, it's like you sign up to move to this world of good and evil. Therefore, listen carefully here, what I'm going to say, the good and evil. Therefore, we are showing forth the fruitage of that tree of good and evil and having good experiences and bad experiences and having good health and bad health, and having prosperity, 
and having poverty. So, in a plain English, the pair of opposite created the moment we did what? Remove ourselves, listen carefully when I say, remove ourselves from the tree of life to the tree of the good and evil. We accept it into the mind. That's our choice. We did it, or our fathers, and you know. So, what happened here? Why I made these two trees? Thanks, my wife, for it. She designed that. This is not mine. <laughs> okay. We remove ourselves from the kingdom of life to the kingdom of darkness, which is called good and evil. Are you with me? So, all these things started the moment we remove ourselves. It's like I moved myself from Damascus and went back to, I moved from the United States and go back to Damascus. I have to be under their rules and regulations. This is the rule you can do. Now, freedom here that we have, you know, is so beautiful, the freedom you have here. But when you get to here, you really don't have freedom. You are captured by good and evil. So, look what happened here. When the man accepted this, he pushed this back, which is the life and the truth. We push it back. So I want you to see the story, the way God explained to me. And what do what we start doing, because we think we're smart, okay? We start looking at good things and making good things of it. And we see bad things and we start making bad things of it. So what happened? The man in his new thinking conditioned himself to good and evil. And he started creating his own good and evil. So what happened here? I love this. Uh, like, you know, men, we think we are very smart in and, uh, and this technology and stuff. What they did, they did an experiment. They brought plants. And they put in plants in two rooms. And one room, they have people there in that room with these plants having great thoughts and beautiful and positive attitudes and stuff. And they notice the plants grow and get bigger and better. And in the other room, they have people talk bad and evil. And they notice the plant wither and die. So guess what man with his smart attitude did? He created two powers. The power of good and the power of evil. Separate completely from God. Completely. Because it's a completely different tree. You remove yourself from the kingdom like the prodigal son. Now I understand what Jesus said. Oh, you're the prodigal son. You just left the kingdom. And he got in trouble and in the dirt and stuff and ta -da -da, and he didn't know. He thought he got it made. I don't need my father. We don't need our father, right? Okay, so anyway, so what happened to the man here created two powers. And he started believing in these two powers. It become like what David said all the time, it's reality. It's like, you know, with, uh, with that movie. What is that movie called? Matrix. You know, the red pill and the blue pill. The red pill, you know, and the blue pill. And the same thing is here. Nothing changed. The moment we took from that tree, we ate from that apple, we just signed up to remove ourselves from here and get to into here. Now, a lot of people, you know, in the Christian life or any, any religion, we're not going to go Christian or not Christian, uh, they start working hard. I want to do good. And they call that good is God. God doesn't belong here at all. This is our creation. We thought is good is God. That's not, this is completely different kingdom. This is the, the kingdom that we chose. And our generation after generation, the grandparents that chose for us. So what happened, here people work so hard and they call good, and what happened, they work hard and they fail, and they swing back to that branch of tree. Oh, they feel bad. Oh my gosh, I'm not good enough, God's not going to love me, not, God is this. And, and what happened, they move themselves and they, they, somebody come and help them, and, and they try to do good and swing on the other branch. So what happened, you are tossing constantly from evil and good.
Now, to me, every time I think about it, wow, this is the tomb. This is death. Because actually, one time I feel like I'm here, I'm doing good, and I work hard. And then something happened, and, and I'm not feeling good, and I'm bad. So I'm always back and forth, like the stock market. One day up, one day down. One day up, one day down. Your blood pressure's up and down. You're, you're just like, you live in, in a constant, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You're afraid what could happen tomorrow. Now, let's say you made it. And you are very smart, and you're very good, and you're very successful. And you're healthy. And guess what? Your brother got sick and got cancer. Or your neighbor, or your best friend. Then you feel like, mm -hmm, you swing, and you're feeling down, and you're feeling bad, and sometimes you question God. God, why did you do that? God did that? You left. You left. Like now, if I go from here and I go back to another country where there is no freedom and there is no nothing, and I'm going there and I'm suffering, and I call David and say, David, oh my gosh, they're beating me, and, and one day this and one day that. I say, well, come back to America. Where's freedom and love and this? You left. You choose to. See, the freedom that God gives us is God doesn't want to force his love on you. God doesn't want to um, keep you. Then, then you cannot, it's one thing you cannot buy is love. You think you can, but actually you cannot. You cannot force someone to love you. And God wants us to love him for what? Not because he scare you, and not because he want to give you cancer, and not he want to put you in poverty. That's what we think. Oh, God is testing us. Yeah, definitely no. Remember what the scripture said? It is the goodness of God that lead people to repentance. What repentance mean? Return. Change. Change back. Come back to the prodigal son. Come back to the father. You know, like some people want to try to scare people. You know, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you go to hell. Now, did God want us to scare people to come to him? Think about it for a second. Do you want anybody to scare you to go to anyone? Do I tell someone, if you don't love me, I'll kill you? <laughs> I mean, just think about it. You know, uh, a lot of people, they, uh, they build like they want you, and, and, they, and what, look what they did. They make hell, it's just so real. They want to scare you to death so you go to God. But God doesn't want that. It is the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. Not fear, not hell, and not disease, and not poverty. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, because sometimes what we do, we take God and, and we, we take him from here and we put him on that tree. God doesn't belong to this tree at all. He doesn't even acknowledge this tree. We did acknowledge it. Because we want to be like God. And this is the first lie. I love this one in the scripture here. When Satan come, uh, and he said, the Satan said, t told Eve, For God know that in the day you eat from, from it, the day, your eyes will be opened. Open what, to what? Open to the lies. And you will be like God. We already like God. He made us in his image and likeness. So this is the first lie. The second lie he told her, and knowing good and evil. Well, God does not know good and evil. There is no evil in God, and there is no bad in God, and God cannot lie. Period. So where does all the bad come from? The moment we accept this is man creation. Death is man creation. Sins is man creation. This is all these things I'm telling you is the product of this tree. So what happened in this life? We are experiencing good and evil, poverty, prosperity, sickness, and health. But this is nothing that this is nothing that in, in the kingdom of God that doesn't exist. 
but we accepted into the mind the conditioning. So what happened here? The moment you accept into conditioning onto this, uh, and all the stories happen, all these new covenant stories started, and, and uh, all the bad things, and the good things, and the law, and, uh, and uh, it's a long story, you know, listen to my first one, you know, the difference between the covenants. But I want to cut short a little bit and jump from there to Jesus Christ. You know, God sent Jesus Christ because he got tired of all this junk that's going on. We even made, how many gods we made? when we move to this tree. Anybody can tell me how many gods exist? <laughs> There's a lot of gods, correct? Like some people, I love some people how they said, all gods are the same. I said, yeah. Do you believe in a cow as a god? No. Do you believe as a statue as a, as God? No. So how come you said God, all gods are the same? No, gods are not all the same. We made different gods because Trying to think good and evil. That's how we condition. That's all what you know. So neither good or evil is good. Anything from that tree is bad. Even the good. Oh, my brother, he said, what do you mean? What do you mean the good is bad? I said, yeah, because it's the same tree, the same, the same root. He said, well, can you explain that to me? I said, actually, the good scare me more than evil. And he said, how? That's a good question. Sometimes, you know, when you're doing good, you think you've been blessed, correct? I know many people, rich people, they think, uh, I am blessed, I have good work, I have good home, I have good insurance, I have this, I have this, this. I said, but do you have God? Uh, uh, yeah, I go to church. <laughs> you know, that's more deceiving to separate you from God than the evil. At least in the evil, when you know you're bad and you're sick, you need help. So you go, God, I am, you exhaust me, I am desperate. But when you are in prosperity and health, actually, that's, I don't need God. I make my own goodness. Oh yeah, God is extra. It's, God is the added thing. But what did Jesus say? Seek the kingdom of God first. And all these things shall be added unto you. So what happened here in this kind of conditioning of good and evil, if you notice, everything the world pushing you to do what? Have more money? Education? I'm not against it. But these are the byproducts of the kingdom of life. But what happened, we're drifting and we are trying to do our good and stuff and we are, we are striving hard and we are always in despair and, and uh, gosh, I mean, Christians are more miserable than anybody I met. Till they got introduced to grace. Then you see them laughing. Laughing even when they sick, uh, laughing even when things going wrong. He said, like now, you know, they told me, what if you got cancer and you're dying tomorrow? Good. I mean, I'm going to my heavenly father. My mission is over. Hallelujah, I already died, I already dropped dead. The moment I accepted Jesus die, uh, Christ, I, I died with him on the cross. I'm already dead. This is just now to share the light, I am the Christ to someone else. And, and what Paul said to die is gain. And to live is the Christ. We are the Christ to someone else. We are the Christ to someone else. So what happened here? We got conditioned so much with this stuff. And that's all what we know. Till Jesus Christ came. He said, listen, and I'm, I love today we have the communion. Because guess what is that communion? This is to me is the antidote to the apple we ate from here. This is the antidote, is it? If you, he said, if you eat from my flesh and body, and if you drink my blood, you leave this lie, and you go to the truth. And what is the truth? I am. You know, he looked at the disciples seeking for the truth, searching for this truth. They want to find the truth. He said, stop. I am the truth. 
I am everything. But, but you know, do they listen? No. Do we listen? No. But I am so happy I find a great place. Honestly, I mean, I am behind David all the way um, because the message that we are give here, you do not hear it somewhere else. You do not. And the oneness uh, that we all talk about, you do not hear it somewhere else. I am better than you or you less than me. I always, when I start my Bible study, I said I never be better and I never be less. Why? Because we're one body in Christ. The moment I start thinking I'm better than you, oops, good and evil, good and bad. I just, I, I, the other day I was so mad at myself. I said, I'm keep, I keep going back to that tree. I thought I burned it from the roots. But I've been conditioned so long for 50 years, good and bad, do it and not do it. Uh, God loves you and God doesn't love you. Uh, there is God and there is no God. That's Satan. He's the liar of all liars. I mean, let me tell you, he can twist you upside down. But, you know, the moment you release yourself from here, because what God said is, I remove you from the kingdom of darkness, you know, I took you to the kingdom of light. I took you back. I took you back there. So don't go back. Now, here's the beauty here I want to share with you. You remember I told you last time uh, we have the mind of Christ, you know, one of these inheritance. Now, do you know a lot of people do not know what the mind of Christ is? They think it's something good. No, it's not good. You go, how can you say that? Well, because Christ doesn't have good and evil in his mind. Jesus has unconditioned mind and all what he knows is one thing. The truth. That's all what he knows. And the truth is neither good or evil. Truth is the truth. Like if I tell you two, two plus two is four, you can't tell me this is good or bad. It's neither. If I tell you today is Monday and you said, oh, Monday is bad. No, maybe to you is Monday bad because you have to go back to work. I'm going to play golf or whatever. I'm going, oh, I'm going to say I'm going to dance, you know. Yeah, that's better than golf. Anyway, um, this is a little advertisement. I sneak it in. I, <laughs> it's freebie, okay? Don't charge me for that. All right. Anyway, so. <laughs> God, you're funny. Anyway, so this, uh, you know, the truth, the truth only is, is the, the, the reality that David always talk about. And uh, the, the real things, but we always drift, and then sometime we take this truth and put it here. Now, I tell people, you know, I said, I want to talk the truth. Okay, what kind of truth? Your truth, man truth, our, our gen generation truth, or the world truth, or God truth. You have to be careful. <clears throat> then we hold so much. On the letter, the Bible said that. Excuse me, the Bible said that. Yeah, but who wrote that Bible? Man did write the Bible, but through what? Through the Holy Spirit, right? And I like what Steve Perry said. You know, maybe everything is uh, biblical, but it's not Christian. I like that when he mentioned that. I, I like it. Now, Christ, that's why Christ came, because he wanted to put an end for this. And he said, eat from my body and eat from my blood. And that I released. And well, what does that mean? You don't just take it and you go, okay, now, now you have to learn how to hear about the truth. And that's what we're doing in this place. But that's not enough. It doesn't. It's, it's not enough. Like, I can talk to you about dancing now every Sunday. How good and it's fun and, uh, and put here videos and you see the most beautiful dancers in the world from all kind of dancing. A year long. Does that make you a dancer? No. The same thing. You can hear the truth over and over and over and, and put it in so many different ways. But is it going to change you? No. Unless we do what? 
This is something very important you have to acknowledge. I don't even know my, the answer myself. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's what happened. I want to explain to you the truth when you go and meditate on it. It's just a stepping stone to move you from the letter to the spirit. But if you just hear it and just memorize it and you just throw it on people, it's not going to do something to you. Because people, they don't do what you say. They watch what you're doing and how you're living and what kind of person you are. You know, I like Joyce Meyer one day. She said, people, they don't read the Bible, but they read you. We're no joke. Your action speaks louder. Like when Jesus, you know, when he, when he was, you know, his ministry for three years and a half, and his mother told him it's time, you know, he always asked the father, you know, he said, I on my own can do nothing. The father who dwells in me does all the work. So whenever he tried to do something or change something, it come from where? Come from above. So here sometimes we try so much, you know, we go and we yell and put our hand on someone and we yell. We think by yelling and screaming is going to change anything. If that's the case, well, it's good. let's take a course in yelling and screaming. And then we all get what we want. No, seriously, uh, the, the revelation that I got from here is just awakening. You know, like, you know how you're here at the beginning, he said, uh, your eyes will be opened to the lies. And now this is what you just received today. Your eyes will be opened to the to the truth. Why do you think Jesus said, I am that I am? What does that mean? I am that I am. I used to go to the Holy Spirit like this. This doesn't make sense. What is that supposed to mean? I am. And I meditate on it and I get quiet. You need, you need, if you wanted the truth, the truth, listen carefully, it doesn't come from me, it doesn't come from David, it doesn't come from the Pope. It's come from within. And who's within? It's the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's all within you. So if you don't go, why do you think the scripture said, be still and know that I am God? Is God out there? No. He's within you. So if you don't tap to that truth that's come within, see, I want you to hear from me, and I want you to hear from David. I want you to hear from Steve Pettit or Steve McVeigh. It's good, but that's not enough. This is all, all knowledge. We go, wow, it's a great sermon. Big deal. I tell you this, for 12 years, I heard great sermons. Did not change my life at all. Actually, it got worse. Yeah, they got it, but how come I don't have it? So God doesn't love me, that's why if everything is bad. Okay, this guy, this is, this is scare me more. Okay, this guy is Christian, Christian, right? And um, he has a big house and he has a yacht and he has a, a lot of money. And um, I'm a Christian. I am poor. God doesn't love me. So I'm constantly, what happened? Swinging, right? Like a monkey. <laughs> Back and forth. And you try hard to be here, but you're still a monkey. You're not human. You're still a monkey. I don't care. I was a monkey for a long time. Now I'm changing to be a, a human in the spirit that listened to the Father. And the Father, all the goodness is here. So, in a plain English, I want you to move yourself from that tomb. Remove yourself from that darkness. Remove yourself from hell. This is hell to me. Am I allowed to say that word here? Oh yeah, good. Okay. This is, if you, like a lot of people said, do you believe in hell? I said, what? What hell? 
I said, I used to when I was here. It was hell, and it was hot, it was burning. <laughs> because one day I'm healthy, one day I'm sick, and one day I'm, I'm prosper, and one day I'm po in poverty, and one day it's like uh, everything going good, and y your friend, your brother died, and suicide, and you, you, dis you constantly disturb. Ah, you heard that. And you know, guess what, till now, I get disturbed. People say, well, you got a mate? No. Because I keep jumping back to that tree. When I get disturbed, I take 10, 15 minutes and said, Father, I'm going back to that tree. So I take a deep breath and start remind myself with my true identity. And I'm back in the kingdom of heaven. So what happened when you remove yourself from that tomb, from that sickness, from that disease that control us, you find yourself at peace, the peace that I give to you, not the world. I don't care how good you are. I mean, the next day you can die or a car hit you or, or something happen. So you keep tossing back and forth, back and forth, and feeling good and feeling bad. And said what? The continuous harmonious living. But you cannot accomplish it just like that because I told you today. If you don't train yourself how to remove that tree from your mind and the good and evil and everything that you learn and you start imparting in your mind all the goodness of God that he pour on you the truth and that truth when you meditate in it it'll elevate you from the human to the spirit. That's why the letter kills but the spirit gives life. Because I said, what do you mean the letter kills? This is, this is God's word. He's confusing me. I remember these things. I said, Father, I am confused. This is like, it doesn't work. Thank God. That's five years ago when I said, this is, does not work. I did it for, ten, for 12 years. And I said, from now on, I would not open that Bible. And then he said, good. <laughs> now you get quiet and listen to me. I am your teacher. See, we forget, you know, Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to do what? To teach us and guide us and bring to remembrance all the things that we forget. But we depend on man more, on the preacher more, on the book more, on buy, get more books, get more knowledge. I'm not against knowledge. But give me one person that experienced God, it worth all the knowledge in the world. Now, why you think good is bad? Okay, I don't want to go. Tell me how, David, how am I doing? Wrap it up. Okay. You know, the Pharisees, they were good, right? They pray, they do the Ten Commandments, they, they tie, they do everything. Why he told them you're far away from God? See, what I'm doing today, I'm not trying to confuse you, and we're going to open a little for questioning. And if we need another session, David, he said, you know, he'd be glad to do another Sunday because it's just, it's just a little big and it's a, it's a huge, you know, because because I was, I was hanging on here. I want to do good. I want to uh, do everything that God will love me. He already loves me. But you need to recognize it. You need to know it. Like my son, you know, he sometimes he tell me, uh, uh, you know, if, if he think if he does good, I'm going to love him. I said, no, I'm going to love you either way. Even when you do bad things, I am not mad at you. I always love you, but that behavior is not acceptable. It's like you bring some of this behavior, you bring it to here. It's not acceptable. There is no such a thing. But here, all what it is, is you've been programmed from day one, from, from your mothers, from your uh, father, from your grandmother, from everybody. Uh, all, that's all what I knew. So when God, he revealed to me this, I was like, oh my gosh. This has nothing got to do with good or bad. It's just the truth. The truth is God is love. And love never die. 
you know, even in uh, human things, when somebody did love you so much and treat you with greatness and they die, you always remember them because that love they gave you stay forever. And God's love is always going to be with us. So, what I'm trying to say here, it's today I want to give you the opening your eyes that we are not of this tree. We are of tree of life. When he said, I am that I am, the I go for God, am is is. God is that God is. There's nothing good or bad about it. It's just he is the creator. He is everything. And guess what God did? Everything that I create is good. So where does the bad come from? The moment we accept it into the mind, we condition ourselves. We even start hearing God think he's yelling at us. God doesn't yell. Where would you get that from? All this happened is the moment we accepted this, we start thinking God is yelling. God's going to punish us. God's going to do this. We created hell on earth because of our acceptance and leaving him. So, today what I'm going to leave you with this, that tell you that God is really want us to see it's all started in the Garden of Eden and it's all finished uh, with Jesus Christ by receiving him. And when you receive him and you start building, like knowing the truth, and then the truth, you build it up, it lifts you up from the letter, because he said the letter kills and the spirit gives life. So, my, this is to you, when you hear any message here in Grace Place, don't just take it for granted. Just go home and say, what is it for me? Where I am? Am I still operating from this tree? Or am I operating from the tree of life? The truth, the goodness, the love. And remember one thing, it is the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. I'm love with the greatest love But I know that I've been forgiven And I'm love with the greatest, with the greatest love. love Oh, I've been set free I've been redeemed by the greatest love